NASA spacecraft will target an asteroid, will crash into it and test it in order to deflect it, to take it out of its trajectory, and this all for Earth defense missions. This is having to do with a twin asteroid, the double asteroid redirect mission, the Didymus, which means twin in Greek, and it's going to impact a spacecraft, testing it, seeing what it's made of, seeing if it can deflect it, and uh, this is the beginning of missions having to do with mitigating asteroid impacts, near-Earth objects that are threatening Earth. Sputnik News Reports by Lilia Dergacheva. The asteroid mission planned for 2022. It'll look into techniques to deflect the double asteroid Didymus as a test, as a hands-on real-time test which is one of the thousands of similar space rocks here, the Didymus asteroids, that potentially pose impact risk to our planet. Now, how they will get their spacecraft close to it is going to be a very difficult task in itself because these bodies travel at thousands of miles an hour. So you can imagine how fast they're speeding through space and how quickly the spacecraft has to get onto it. Now, asteroid researchers and spacecraft engineers from NASA of the US plus European Space Agency of Europe and around the world are conferring in Rome next week to discuss the latest headway in the field and their common goal. This is a joint mission and they will attempt to deflect a potentially hazardous asteroid while it's still in space. For now, the plan, due to be fine-tuned in the next few months, involves crashing the NASA spacecraft DART, D-A-R-T, or Double Asteroid Impact Test, DART for short, into the, the asteroid. And as follow-up work, the ESA's HERA is poised to study the crash site and look into the direction of the asteroid's new path. In other words, Will the spacecraft have succeeded in deflecting the asteroid substantially from its trajectory? The impact, that is, is to change the path of the asteroid so that it deflects it away from its goal, its uh, destination. And they will do this in order to find out if that could be done in the future with other asteroids. Now the thing is, this asteroid is basically the size of a building so it's pretty small but still it can uh, be a city killer if it does impact earth now if it does not change the trajectory of the uh, asteroid significantly then that's going to be a problem but this is what they want to test they also want to see what the ejected material will be made of to see what the asteroid is made of. One member of the research group and one of HERA's founders is former Queen guitarist and astrophysicist Brian May. And he explains at length how the mission would be conducted, saying in a video posted to YouTube in late June that it would be humanity's first ever spacecraft to visit a double asteroid Didymus typical of the thousands that pose impact risk to our planet, he says. And he explains, imagine a mountain in the sky with another rock about the size of a great pyramid swinging around it. That is Didymus. He's a former musician and he explains metaphorically before continuing to evaluate the danger from the seemingly tiny moon big enough to destroy a city in the event of a collision with Earth. He says, but we are going to find out if it's possible to deflect it. He specified and asserted that HERA would enhance our understanding of asteroids and how to better provide planetary defense by means of briefcase-sized CubeSats that will operate like drones. And he says they will be able to take more risks by flying closer to the asteroid 
and carrying state-of-the-art science instruments before then touching down. Now, SpaceX CEO Elon Musk admitted earlier that Earth had no defense against imminent asteroid threats in response to an asteroid story reposted by friend Joe Rogan. Rocky objects, known as, as asteroids, are drawn to Earth due to the gravitational forces and may bring about tsunamis, catastrophes, shockwaves, even uh, Earth extinction events, as in the case of the dinosaur 66 million years ago. Now, according to a report by spacetelescope.org, there are over 700,000 rocks in space, and most of them are found in the so-called main belt, which lies between the orbits of Mars and Jupiter, along with the apocalypse asteroid Bennu, and long-standing talking point and subject of research in the astrophysical uh, astronomic community. It's a group of rocks that go by the name Potential Hazardous Objects, PHO. They're feared to come in dangerous proximity to Earth. Now, even if they explode in the atmosphere, the outcome could still be strongly felt on Earth. This was experts have come to believe citing, for example, the Chelyabinsk meteor that exploded above Russia in February of 2013. Despite it being only 20 meters wide, that's about 60 feet wide, and causing no fatalities, the shockwave from that blast led to 1,500 injuries and damaging over 7,000 buildings. Now here we have the diagram of it. It's uh, due to launch about December of next year, up to May of 2021, and the impact will take place about a year later on the smaller of the two asteroids, Didymus, the moon of the Didymus. So uh, this one, the smaller one is the size, for example, of a pyramid, and the other one is the size of a mountain, and the little one orbits a bigger one. And it's going to be quite a success if they do catch up with it because as we said it's traveling at a tremendous speed through space and that's one thing that they have to do catch up with it and do all this work as the whole thing is running through space so now the nasa planetary defense dart mission double asteroid redirect test mission for planetary defense coordination office so thank goodness they do, they are trying to defend Earth from such objects. The Didymus system, derived from photometric light curve and radar data, the primary body is about 780 meters in diameter, and the moonlet is about 160 meters in size. They're separated by just over one kilometer, so they're pretty close to each other. The primary body rotates every 2.26 hours, while the tidally locked moonlet, moonlet, the one that's going to be uh, crashed onto, revolves about the primary once every 11.9 hours, almost one-sixth of the known near-Earth asteroids population are binary, or multiple body systems. So I didn't even know that. This is the first time I heard of that. The basically that most of the almost one sixth of the as known near Earth asteroids are not alone. They're either with another asteroid or multiple body systems coming at us. So uh, the Dart spacecraft will achieve the impact deflection, deliberately crashing itself onto the moonlet at a speed of 6.6 .6 kilometers per second. Uh, that's amazing with the aid of an onboard camera named Draco and sophisticated autonomous navigation software, the collision will change the speed of the moonlet in its orbit around the main body by a fraction of 1%, but this will change the orbital period of the moonlet by several minutes, and it will be enough to be observed and measured using telescopes on Earth. So once launched, DART will deploy rollout solar arrays, ROSA for short, to provide solar power needed for DART's electric propulsion system, and the DART spacecraft will demonstrate the NASA Evolutionary Xenon Thruster solar electric propulsion system as part of its space propulsion 
Next C is the next generation system based on the Dawn spacecraft propulsion developed by NASA's Glenn Research Center. And by utilizing electric propulsion, DART could benefit from significant flexibility to the mission timeline. DART spacecraft launch window begins July 2021, and DART will launch aboard a SpaceX Falcon 9 rocket from Vandenberg Air Force Base, California. After separation from launch vehicle and over a year of cruise, it will intercept Didymus Moonlet late September 2022, when the Didymus system is within 11 million kilometers of Earth, enabling observations by ground-based telescopes and planetary radar to measure the change in momentum imparted on the moonlet. So they'll, they will examine how it changes after the impact. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece, and Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.